We're out in the streets of Melville to go inside of the C-suite of Club 808, Boiti Tulu. She's a game changer. She's making waves in the industry of the business of women in entertainment and our feature. We talk to her now. Hi, Boiti. How are you? Hey, how are you? Thank you. You look amazing today. Thank you. So do you. Uh, I'm, really, I'm really excited about, first of all, the opportunity to come inside of your space to have this conversation. Uh -huh. So when you first started up until now, did you ever dream you'd be where you are? No, not at all. Um, I don't think it was ever part of the, the narrative in terms of where I saw myself. I did see myself in different kinds of places. Like, I thought I was going to be a graphic designer, and then I thought I was going to be an interior designer, then a painter, then a musician. It's a lot of things in one, but I really didn't think it would escalate to this point and get me to this point, not at all. I mean, and when you first started up from now, from then until now, yeah. things have gotten really serious. Like you guys are making really good money. Well, I don't think people, well, I don't think people appreciate the, the level that you guys operate on, right? Yeah. And at what point did you realize this is serious business? Um, I think I've always known. I think from the very beginning, I mean, if you're granted an opportunity like this to do what you love and to get paid for it, I think from that point onwards, you have to take it seriously because it's a blessing that not many people can experience. Sure. So I've always known to take it as serious as I do, regardless of the amount of money that sure. I assumed I would make. Sure. Um, I think the concept of doing something that I love and getting paid to do it, I think that alone was, you know, was permission for me to, to know that mm -hmm. this is something serious. Sure. Yeah. But at this stage, you, you guys are like a deal makers, like the, the yeah. legit deal. I mean, that's a business. Yeah. You're right. It's a it's a serious business. Mm -hmm. People see you guys. You look beautiful and all of this stuff. But behind the scenes, there are number crunching. Yeah. Do you enjoy that side of it? Um, it was kind of nerve wracking because you don't go to school for these things, <laughs> which right. is bizarre. Cause yeah, you yeah. don't go to school to be a businesswoman. I mean, I didn't go to school for it. I didn't. Um, it's like it's almost like no one teaches you. You just get dragged in and you have to learn as you go. Um, so it was very crucial for me to surround myself with people who would guide me in the right direction in terms of the decisions I'd make with my money, with um, the deals I would make, um, the things I'd say yes and no to. So I think more than anything, I have to give thanks to the people that I surround myself with because they guided me because I can't pretend like I knew everything sure. from the get go. Yeah. Sure, sure. I feel like people can relate to you. You mm -hmm. seem like the girl next door, a friend. Yeah. Is that part of your...? Um, I think that is very important because I work in a space where um, people take from whatever it is that I give them. So if I'm going to teach anything, it would be, you know, whatever it is that I would want my daughters to learn. So it would be positivity, um, being gentle with human beings and being kind because that's, we're, we're all just human. My, I don't know, I don't know how to call it, but what I believe in and how I, I work with human beings and how I relate to this industry is I treat it as how I would want my daughters to be treated if they were in this kind of space and how I want my parents and, my, and the people that I love to be treated. So I treat others with that kind of respect and I think that's what gives people the permission to feel like, you know what, she's one of us. Yeah. And yeah, it also gives people the permission to feel like they can do what I'm doing because you realize that you don't have to alter too much of yourself to, you know, to have access to great things. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, I've noticed that you've managed to keep the balance between sort of that deeper spiritual side, mm -hmm. but also knowing how to have fun and let your sex appeal roll out. Yeah. Like your sex appeal is almost an asset of your brand. Uh -huh. I have to bring mm -hmm. that up because I know the viewers are going to be like, dude, you didn't mention the I thing. Mean, that's true. <laughs> Right? But how, how, how much of yourself are you willing to let go? I saw something, I don't know, in a magazine or something recently where they were talking about how on fire your Instagram account is. How much of that is conscious and how mm -hmm. much of it is just you having fun? Um, I think it's 50-50 because ultimately it has to be authentic. I think the most important thing is for it to be authentic. I don't do something that I would in the long run, long run regret. So if I'm going to post any kind of picture or whatever, I know what it's doing. And um, business-wise, I know that it's bringing in a certain amount of numbers or likes, and I can use that, but also, I'm also comfortable doing it. I'm not doing it because I'm selling myself out for the numbers. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's a mixture of both. So yeah. I understand that I have to do it for, you know, for work, sure. but also I enjoy doing it, and I love myself doing it, so it. it's okay. Like any business, it's mm -hmm. a cutthroat game. Yeah, of course. Whoever is at the top, 
attracts the most deals. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the top sort of five or ten, you obviously are there. You know, you've got yourself, many, Benong, etc. Do you feel competitive? Do you want to um, knock somebody from the throne? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, I think that's also one of the things that I have made such a, an important pivotal reminder in my career. It's um, to, like I said, own your own throne. Own your throne. Um, I, I, always, I love yeah. that thing of yours, yeah. Run your race because it is, it's, it's almost vital to, to understand that no one will walk your path and you can't walk anyone else's. And it makes the, the journey so seamless because you're not worried. I know it's, it's, it's a business and it is cutthroat, but <laughs> um, I'm in this space because I'm meant to be here, not because someone pushed me in here or not because someone knocked me out from another position or whatever. I'm here because I'm meant to be here and um, I respect everyone else's space. I mean, sometimes, yes, I'm only human. You get jealous, you're like, oh, why not me? But then I think it's important to, to grasp the concept that if it's not yours, it won't be yours. And if it is yours, it belongs to you. No one can take it from you. Um, yeah, so I think that's how I've worked through it. And I hope that that, I don't know, that paints an individual picture of who I am yeah, and sure. to teach everyone that they can stand alone yeah. you know you don't have to be compared to anyone because we're all we're, we're all so unique and that should be celebrated and you shouldn't yeah. fear other people yeah. I want you to imagine sitting in a circle around you are 13 year old girls yeah and your 13 year old self is sitting with them Ooh. what should you guys be talking about we should be talking about the importance of gratitude um, because we learned that so late in life and it's such a simple concept but it brings about so many incredible things so I would definitely teach them to always be grateful for every single thing because we take things for granted especially when we're kids so I would teach that and I would also talk about being comfortable in your own skin I think that's crucial and vital and also something that I feel like should be taught in schools apart from Christianity and religion sure. just meditation and teaching oh, wow. children the, the importance of stillness from a very young age. I think when they grow up with that, seeing the difference that it makes to my life, and I've only been doing it for two years, I can imagine you know, a 13 year old doing it throughout the entire life. You, you understand that it's, it's all always okay you know, when you have access to your silence. So wow. I would teach that, yeah. And, and lastly, you know, thinking about, you seem like the type of person who probably doesn't have any regrets, but <laughs> if there's one well. thing you would have done differently, um, in building up yourself to this point of influence, mm -hmm. one thing you would have done differently. Sure, I know. I don't want to sound like I'm being politically correct, but it <laughs> it really is. It's, it's something that I, because obviously what you speak becomes a reality, and so whatever I'm going to speak, it must be what resonates with who I am right now. And so I will honestly, truly say that if there are any regrets, I wouldn't change anything because I don't want to change where I am right now. You know, and. In terms of your journey, if you literally even change one strand of your hair from five years ago, it alters your entire journey. So I wouldn't change anything because I'm happy where I am right now. So I know it sounds very, very kumbaya, <laughs> but it's true. If you alter anything from like even right. five minutes ago, it, it, it changes the entire course of your journey. And yeah, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. So. And I'm good. we wouldn't be in this interview and yes, we wouldn't exactly. be able to inspire this one day. So thank you exactly. so much thank for allowing you. us to come inside. Thank you so much. Awesome. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's another episode of Inside of Her C-Suite. We'll be back next week. But if you are a woman and want to get in the business of entertainment, Boiti, hopefully she's inspired you. What's up, guys? This is Boiti, and you're chilling Inside Her C-Suite with Timothy Maurice. <laughs>